Um, this semantic track is start, uh, started off by a work focusing on concrete and uh, di dis um, discrete data and the logical based things. So the title is Efficient Computation of Th Signature Restricted Views for Semantic Web Ontologies. Okay, what is ontology? So given a natural language sentence, human, is a male or female, have exactly two parents who are human as well. So to model this sentence in ontology, so you can see we can use some logical based representation to do the same thing, right? So where human, female, male, and um, something like nouns are concept names, and also the binary relation, half parent is a role name. And we can also use some logical constructors and uh, like uh, negation and or exist for all, something like this, to construct con uh, complex constructs. So applications of ontology, first for the semantic web, which is the theme um, in this topic, and also for recommender systems, bioinformatics, etc. So there are some limitations in using them. And one of the biggest one and is the ontology development is time consuming, labor intensive, and error prone. And so we are lack of um, automated tools to do this, to help us in, in developing ontologies. So, so that's why we you know, initiate this work. And this is uh, one scenario of ontology reuse or use or reuse. Okay, given an ontology called Snowman City, which is about informatic uh, ontology and focusing on different aspects of uh, medical. And uh, if we want to focus only on some of the particular topics like disease or symptoms from the original ontology, and a way of a feasible approach to do this is to extract part of this original ontology and, uh, and then we focused on this specific parts. And, but, um, and the purpose is to avoid high cost of developing ontology from scratch because we can use uh, the existing ontologies and we can create a part of this and then work on the parts. So you can, you can think of this like, uh, you know, we extract uh, views from a database and from extract uh, like specific columns and the rows from a given table. And we have uh, like um, four purposes of doing this. The first one is consistent with the original table. They, they, they created the new table and the original table share some properties and the features. And then we can access to, we can you know, put the access to a specific data rather than you know, the overall data. And then we can restrict our focus to specific data. And also the reasoning of some computing task can be done on this new part rather than the entire ontology or the entire, entire database. So okay, formalize this problem and given a set of concept and role names in the original ontology and also a subset of this signature. So our aim is to create a new ontology containing all information relevant to this signature sigma via some reasoning procedures. So the result we call a view of the original ontology. And in this work, we propose a method to compute the view of a, or the original ontology via a technique called forgetting. So this is the idea of how forgetting is working, you know, given an input ontology and a signature sigma, and then we first compute the other signature called F signature or forgetting signature, and which is the signature from the original ontology minus the specified sigma. And this, so, which is the deal of sigma, and then we can we are forgetting the technical forgetting to generate the output. So this is a formal definition. Give a ontology O specified in a description logic or a log logical language L, and a signature F, which is a subset of the original ontology, the signature, and a new L ontology V is a result of forgetting F from O if these two conditions are satisfied. The first one is that the new ontology must be a subset, of the signature must be a subset of the original one. And the second, which is the most important one, is for any L axiom alpha with its signature inside the original, uh, the, the signature of the original ontology minus F, 
and for any of such alphas. So if V entails alpha, then O entails alpha, and vice versa. So this is an if and only if condition. OK, some theoretical results. So for some description logics, uh, forget, uh, the results of forgetting do not always exist. This is the first important one. And the second one, for the description logic EL, deciding the existence of forgetting is exponential time complete. And deciding for LC is double exponential time complete. You know, if you know about uh, the computational, like um, the computa uh, complexity class, and you see this is a very hard problem. So for both, the results can be triple exponential in size with respect to the input ontology. I mean, in terms of a space complexity. So, and this is, just, I just want to everyone know that uh, this work is dealing with a very computationally extremely hard problem. So some existing forgetting methods. So there are several of them, and uh, many of them, you know, are dealing with different description logics, uh, different uh, dialects like EL, like ALC, etc. But uh, all with performance issues due to the inherent computation, computational challenge of the problem, as I said before. So in this work, we are gonna, you know, solve the problem, the, the computation challenge. So our focus is e, uh, the description logic ELI, and this is the syntax of ELI. I presume everyone in this room is kind of familiar with this, but never mind if you're not, never mind, and uh, you, you have to be familiar with this, um, okay? So our forgetting method, this is the entire uh, procedure of the forgetting of, of, of our method. So the input are uh, our ontology O, and the forgetting feature f. So first we check if f is empty. If it's empty, okay, the, um, the, the input ontology is already the result. And if not, we have to do something more complicated. So if f is not empty, so first we need to go around a procedure of iteration of several rounds. And in each round, a single name, either it's a concept name or row name, x, is eliminated using a set of inference rules. So before um, applica uh, the application of the inference rules, we have to do something called uh, X normalization. It's a normalization procedure where we have to introduce a auxiliary concept name called definers. So this is a key step in our method. So what is X normalization? Here we use an example as if we want to forget the concept name A from the original ontology and we have specialized six forms of normal form. So which, as you see in the slides, and we say uh, ELI ontology O is in A normal form if every A axiom is in A normal form. So this is an example, an example of how we introduce definer symbols to make the original structure of the ontology into the structure where we can call this structure a normal form. So you see, we have to introduce new concept names from outside. And so now, the number of definers we introduced um, is a key element um, in deciding the complexity of our algorithm. So our method introduced a number of definers, um, which is bounded by um, O of n, where n denotes the number of existential restrictions. So it's a linear introduction of definers. So let's see for other methods. For the methods we have just listed here before. And for others, the result becomes O of 2 to n, where n denotes the number of existential restrictions. So it's an exponential introduction of definers. And these are the inference rules for eliminating A working on the normal form, and which is very complicated technically. I want to go to you know, very deep technical things of uh, the rules, but if you're interested in this, uh, you can come by my poster and we can discuss more, okay? So this is an example of, sh uh, of showing how we eliminate A from um, A axioms in this ontology, which is already in a normal form. And after applying exhaustive application for the infer inference rules to O, to review all logical consequences regarding, regarding those you know, symbols um, except for A. 
So the output is a refined ontology, which is O minus A, um, which is devoid of any traces or any occurrences of A. So our, our experiments, so the actual uh, experiment is run on a average laptop computer, and so the, the data, test data sets we, are, um, we, we, we used were the uh, Oxford IISG ontology repository and also the NCBO Bellpoto, and which are benchmark on, um, ontology repositories that we really use for testing you know, the performance of uh, reasoning methods. So we also partition these ontologies into three types, and uh, with the size of ontology, and the, um, the auto denotes the size, the, the number of axioms in this ontology. So it's uh, quite a uh, large corpus of ontologies um, from both sources. And this, these are the statistic data of uh, the test data, and uh, the mean, the max, ma uh, medium, and um, mean. And uh, you see um, this test data has collected all you know, um, ranges of ontologies from, real, uh, from the real world. Okay. So these are the results, and the proto is our method, and the lithi is the method we compared to. And the first important uh, um, column is the SR column, which denotes a success rate. And you see, for our method, and their success rate remains perfect score, and 100 success rates, which is remarkable, I, I would say. And also, our prototype was uh, 52 times faster than, on, um, than Lisi, the current SOTA on Oxford, and uh, um, 30, 37 times faster on Bellpoto. And also for the memory consumption, you can see, and uh, our, for our method and this figure, and it is consistently lower than the figures of Lisi. Um, okay. And we have done another interesting comparison with, uh, I presume some of you have known about modularization, which is another technique for extracting parts of an ontology, but uh, is uh, computationally um, easier than our technique, which is called forgetting. And uh, top, bottom, star, max, a max, these are the modularization um, techniques or methods, and we compared to, and we have collected all of them um, on the market. So you see, except for Lisi, Lisi is uh, the, the, the forgetting method we compared to. And uh, the first graph shows the um, time used for this uh, computation. And the second last one is uh, our prototype. And you see, and for the time consumption, and our prototype was comparable to those of uh, those um, modularization techniques. And for the, for the um, um, for, the, for the space consumption and memory consumption, and uh, still, um, the prototype is among one of the best performances, you know, within all these forgetting methods, but compared to the modularization methods, okay, and, and because of the technique itself, it's nature, and so um, it's much higher than the um, modularization techniques. So, and why we got very good results, we have a very good performances, as you see, and this is due to our definer introduction strategy. And I have um, got part of a snapshot of uh, our results from our paper, and you see on this ontologies, and uh, Bioporto ontologies, Lisi have introduced um, these numbers of definers for the normalization of the forgetting, but for our prototype, it's much, much, much lower. It's almost all zero definers coming in to normalize the original ontology, and that's why we, our method is, is particularly faster than the other methods. Okay, so, so um, conclusion and outlook. The main results I have to summarize. So this work is about creating signature-based views of ontologies, which is used to foster ontology reuse, and we have developed a highly optimized forgetting for signature uh, procedure and for computing such views. And although there are inherent compute, uh, computational results um, that um, um, constitute obstacles in, for it for in practice, but we have shown that uh, and our method can overcome these obstacles and that can be um, one of the useful tools to the KR and the description logical community. So some immediate future work is to extend the method to 
um, accommodate A boxes also because our work is only focused on T boxes and also to focus on more expressive decidable discrete logics. So that's all of this work and uh, thank you very much.